What is going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong, and welcome to my autofocusing guide with the Sony Alpha cameras. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys which focus mode that I use the most and how I use them in my video productions. But before we get started, I wanna address a few things first. Number one, I use all native Sony lenses. I don't adapt any lenses. The reason being the autofocus always works the best with native lenses. I won't get into details of that, but I will likely have a separate video regarding that topic in the future, so subscribe to stay tuned. Number two, this guide focuses on the A7R II, the A6300, the A6500, and the new A9. Now, the reason being is because all those cameras uses phase detection autofocus as opposed to contrast detection autofocus, which the A7S II uses. So that kind of makes that camera the black sheep of the Alpha family. But a black sheep that can see into the dark, huh? Why? Huh? Yeah, Why? you like that? You think that, that doesn't, no, no, that doesn't work? No? No. Okay, well then. Also, I don't have any experience with the models that came before the A7R2, so if you have the A7, the A7 II, the A6000, etc., you know, the cameras, you know, your camera's a little bit too old, I, I don't think I can help you. Sorry. Number three, I have all the autofocus settings on normal. I don't often change that unless I'm planning to do a focus pull between two objects. You can see how I do that in my smooth rack focus video up here. Number four, I always have the phase detection feature on, which means whenever the camera finds a face, it will lock focus on it right away, which is cool, but I will address some of the shortcomings of having this on when we get into the individual focus mode. So without losing the main focus of this video, Let's get started. So the first one is Y, and in this mode, the camera analyzes everything on the screen and focus on either whatever is closest to it or whatever stands out. I personally like using this option for YouTube, especially with the face detection feature on. Whenever I'm doing product demo in front of the camera, I can trust it to maintain focus on my face, and it always does a great job. For vloggers, you wanna be in wide mode because the face detection will pick up your face right away since it's closest to the camera. When you need to turn it around and shoot something, it'll prioritize the subject you're pointing at. Now obviously, because you're telling the camera to focus on anything on the screen, you will bound to run into times where it'll focus on the wrong thing. Like if I had on wide focusing during the procession of a wedding, it'll likely focus on one of the audience member's face and not the bridal party. Like, I don't know, focus on Uncle Bob. And we all know how much we hate Uncle Bob and his damn freaking camera at the weddings. Remember, we're smarter than our cameras. Our cameras are tools that needs to be guided to what it needs to work on. And luckily for us, we have the other focus modes and each have their own ways of solving our problems. The next one we're gonna talk about is zone. And this is perfect for keeping things on one side of the screen in focus. So if you're shooting with the rule of thirds concept, like a talking head interview, you can choose which side of the third your subject is sitting in to focus on. Which reminds me of a story I need to tell you guys, and don't worry, it's related to zone focusing. Remember that 85mm 1.8 autofocus test video that I made a couple of months ago? I actually had to shoot another version of that because the camera had a lot of trouble maintaining focus on my face. I was testing out this exact setup right here, which was relatively new at the time, and I had the focus area set to Y with face detection on. But for whatever reason, the focus kept going in and out, which was odd because it never did that before. But what I found out was, when you have an external monitor connected to the camera via micro HDMI, and you're shooting in 4K, face detection does not work. It will say it's not available, which is extremely odd because face detection would work in 1080p even with an external monitor. So for whatever reason, it does not work in 4K. So what I've been doing since then was use zone focusing and have it in the area where my face will be at. I never had that issue again. I could of course, not use the external monitor, but I just like looking at my face a little too much whenever I shoot. Yeah, who's that? Who's that sexy guy right there? Who is gonna own today's video shoot? You are. <laughs> you are, you are gonna own today's video. It's gonna slay, yeah. Next up is center, and funny enough, it's the mode that I use the least, even though in almost all the cameras, they focus the best right in the center. And that's a testament to the face detection autofocus that Sony implemented in these cameras. They all work just as well as the center. 
but I still either use this or put the zone focusing right in the middle whenever I'm on a gimbal, and I'm tracking my subject right in the center for that symmetry look. Last but not least is spot focusing, and this is for that very specific target on your screen that you need absolute critical focus on because the other focusing mode is just too damn large. Remember that bridal party example? I would use the large spot, place it on either the left or the right top third of the screen, and keep the bridesmaid and the groomsmen in that box as they walk down the aisle. To be honest, I really like using the flexible spot focusing with the A6500's touchscreen because you can move the point to where you need it to be by tapping on the screen, which makes it the most used focusing mode on that camera. It's kind of frustrating to do that with the A7R2 because you have to use the buttons on the wheel to move it, which can slow you down. I gotta thank my friend Garrett Bird from Gears, Glasses, and Gadgets for turning me to this trick. When I first got the camera, I would set it to wide focusing and tap on the screen if I needed to focus on a specific area. However, if you do do that, the camera will go into manual focus after a while. I thought it was a bug, but apparently it's not, which I think it's still weird it's programmed like that. But Garrett told me if I want to use the tap to focus feature, it's best to be in flexible spot because it's the only mode that will maintain autofocus continuous. So thank you Garrett. Now I know I skipped center lock on autofocus, but to be honest, it's the mode that I dabbled the least in because the few times that I tried it out, I had it lose focus on a subject before. A bit too risky in most of my situations, but I'll continually test it and update you guys as time goes on. Now before we wrap things up, I want to share with you guys a quick tip. Set one of your custom buttons to have the autofocus manual focus toggle. As good as the autofocus on these cameras are, sometimes manual focus will end up saving the day. In the rare event that the camera is not doing a good job autofocusing, you can easily turn it off and just manually focus yourself. Now the reason why I'm suggesting this is because some Sony lenses do not have a physical autofocus manual focus switch, so having it on the camera for fast access is ideal. Personally, if I know my subject is not going to be moving so much, I'll let the camera automatically lock the focus and then I'll turn off the autofocus. Reason being is because if I have to walk away from an unmanned camera, I don't have to worry about something else appearing in the shot and the camera focusing on that instead. And it has happened before. Also, having the manual focus toggle helps avoid this pulsation slash breathing effect from the LED lights. The reason why this is happening is because the camera is always constantly focusing to keep the subject in focus. It's not noticeable in most cases, but again, if LED lights are present or if you just notice that pulsation effect, turn off the autofocus. And that's my guide on how to autofocus with your Sony Alpha cameras. And check out some of these other tips and tricks right here on how to shoot better videos with those same cameras. And if you found this guide helpful, I hope you guys can share it with others and spread the knowledge. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.